Hey everybody, Dan here with Excel VBA is fun. Today I want to talk to you about the benefits of using a grid control inside an Excel worksheet or a user form. What is a grid? A grid is a special control that helps you edit and control your data in the safest, quickest, and frankly sexiest way. It goes way, way beyond using a list box, list view, or MS Flex Grid Control. This thing actually allows you to use specialized editors, things like date pickers, in each cell of the grid. You can sort, you can filter, move columns around, use icons and images. It uses grouping and calculations. You can disable any of that that you want, and it's super, super fast. In this series, I'm going to show you how to use the grid. So if you want to follow along, pause the video really quick and grab the installer from the link in the video description or at the top of your screen really quick. And let's get going. This free video series will be part of my 8 plus hour course on the topic of the grid control. Not excerpts from the video. These are full videos from the course so you can get started. So without further ado, let's dive in. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about the difference between list box controls versus the new X grid control and how powerful the X grid truly is. So why do we even use list boxes or grids? Why do we use either of them? Well, the list box has been around for a long time and it's basically an expanded drop down or combo box. It's simply a list of items that are all laid out there so you can click on one that you want. Okay, it's not meant for editing, for sorting, for filtering, for grouping, or in general looking cool. It's just that. You click one of the things on a list. That's it. The point of a grid is so that you can edit and control the flow of data. Uh, perhaps you want to lock it in your database or you want to lock it on a hidden worksheet or something. And you don't want people to screw it up unless they meet the conditions on your user form or on your grid on a worksheet. So let's show some examples. So again, we're talking about list boxes versus grids. Let's say we have this sample Excel sheet, and this is just a colorized version of a little tiny table from Excel. It's got first names, last names, bonus, and the date of the bonus that they received. Pretty simple. However, with a list box, like we said, a list box is just that. It's just a list of items. So you can click on the entire row. You cannot adjust the columns. You cannot move the columns or group them. You can only do a click event or a double click event on the row themselves. You can't click on a specific cell. So list boxes are just meant for you to make a choice. You can have multiple columns. You can fake it, but you can only have a maximum of nine columns, especially if you're using the add item method. Now, when we're talking about an X grid, here's the same data table, but we have created all these different editable fields. So I'm, I'm going to type plus 10 and hit enter, and it's going to change that cell right there. You have date pickers, you have calendar controls, you have the ability to sort and filter. Uh, notice in this GIF, I'm actually moving the columns over. Notice that the column headers have different formattings, bold, italic, they have icons, they have images that are added, and formatting. With a list box on the left, you can only have one font or one font size or one font color throughout. That's including the column headers as well as the content. So you can't change it up like you can on the X grid. Now there's a lot more to the X grid, so let's look at some more examples. In this GIF that's playing right now, you notice that the column headers have sub columns and you just click the expand or collapse button to expand and collapse these categories. So the ship city has a ship country buried within it that you can still sort and edit. The next GIF, we're going to talk about the different editable cell types. So you, some of them are numeric, some of them are date. If you squint, you can kind of see there are subtotals underneath. So as I type the number 20, the total underneath it for that category is updating, as well as the max date is constantly searching and waiting for changes. So it'll show the max date on the bottom, but if you look on the top, the minimum date for that particular person uh, is showing on the top. So you can do all these different uh, aggregate functions like min, max, and things like this. More on the aggregate functions, sum, count, average, min, max, subtotals, things like that. If you look at the bottom, you notice it has the count of items, 
the average for that category and the total. And as I type 620, it changes the total and the average right away as you're changing it. So this is all inside a Excel user form, which normally you could never do any of this type of editing inside a user form and protect your data and control the flow of your data. Now in this example, we're taking the HTML formatting to the extreme and all of these sub items from the inbox and the sub items from the outbox. You'll notice that as we click, it reveals the formatting code that was used. But look at this, you have the background color Antolini in red and the text, the foreground color in yellow. Then you have Dean Thomas completely in orangish red. All of these items have parentheses blue items like blue 23 or 345 and some of them are bold, some of them could be italic. You can choose every single item, every single cell, how you want them to be formatted, as well as, as we've seen before, how the columns are formatted. And you can also apply masking into different edit types. So if you wanted somebody to only type in numbers using an IP address formatting or a phone number formatting with a certain number of area code characters, you can mask those cells any way you feel like, and there's lots of documentation. The support is great as well. You can also connect to a database like an access database as well as your Excel tables. So in this example we were connecting to a live data set with I updated the images. You notice that Margaret Peacock actually has a, a picture of me on it instead of a person named Margaret. But you can edit all these inside the table and it actually will update the database itself. And we'll show you how to update Excel tables as well later in the course. You can also utilize images with perfect clarity. They use something called a 64-bit encoding. So you can actually take a image as a string of text and using that string of text you can push those images of a, a CD or a floppy disk drive or something like this. And you can also make color picker types. You can use check boxes and they have the new partial check. So you notice that if a sub item is not completely checked, if not all of the items underneath it are checked, then it goes gray, which is a partial check. And you can include the grid lines uh, that connect the child items to the parent items as well. So there's just so many features in this. There are advanced grouping types, so uh, they actually have the option in this example where you can drag the country column and that whenever they're grouped by country, it knows to include these icons. For example, USA and UK and Germany, they all have their flags for that particular country. So I think that is a really cool, neat, advanced trick that you can use. You can apply customized filters. You notice that these have the filters all enabled in all four of the columns and those little upper right hand squares. So in this case, they want perhaps group A and item number four only, but then they can change that or they can do a search filter or they can even choose all at the very top of the filter. So there's so many items and that's not even including the filter bar at the bottom. You can also enable grouping on any of the columns that you want, not just the filter. So in this case, they're dragging the city, uh, and now it's all grouped by that. And you can also group by multiple. So let's say we had the shipper as well as we also want to include the shipping country. So now it is grouped by shipper and the shipping country, just like a pivot table can utilize multiple uh, grouping methodologies and even when they are grouped like this you can still sort and you can still edit these cells if they're available to you now let's talk about skinning with all of the X control suite you have these beautiful skin types that you can apply to all the different features so notice that the columns have that blue kind of uh, translucent thing going on and whenever you click on a row and select that row you have that same skin applied and then you notice that the scroll bar to the right has its own skin and you also notice that they applied alternating row grid lines so that you can more easily see what you're dealing with and you can apply these skins using a template uh, text file or string of text as a variable or 
you can apply them before you actually run your grid and there's actually a cool editor that you can use as well. Now the filter prompt at the very bottom you notice they typed in London and now they're typing the partial word of the word president and it will after about half a second it'll apply that filter and immediately look at multiple columns if you want it to in order to filter down your results so first it's looking at the city and then it finds a lot of things with the word president in the title column so it's searching all these different columns in the next lecture we're going to show you how to set up the grid control and get it installed so you can start learning right away right alongside me now you can install the demo or you can go ahead and purchase the full version either way you're going to be able to follow along with the content so that you can practice and see if this is for you we'll see you in the next lecture